Okay, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Stefan, Stefan Boswe. I'm a co-founder of the IBA Brussels chapter. Um, have been president before uh, Philip for 10 years. Now I'm ambassador and um, one of the founders also of the Babok study group, which we already do for uh, several years. And I'm happy to invite you to have you here uh, and also on the hybrid part, on the virtual part, uh, to tell you a bit more about the Babok. What is the Babok and how do you read it? Because I've heard a few times when you speak about the Babok, if you want to read it, it's like you want to read the yellow pages. Now, it's not that bad, but I can understand what, why the person says that. Yeah. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit. Um, this is a bit of structure, but yeah, that's nice. Uh, if you get the slides afterwards, we'll get through that. Um, this is the nice book, The Babok. Uh, it's the only globally recognized uh, standard for the practice of business analysis. So you have other standards like uh, uh, BCS, BCS, for example, uh, IREP, uh, but they are always a bit regional. For example, BCS, uh, lots of UK, uh, Ireland, uh, Netherlands, and, and then it slows down. Yeah? Uh, IREP also, Germany, uh, UK, and, 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 but the Babok is the only one which is recognized uh, globally. Um, it's essential, blah, blah, blah. Uh, what is also uh, important is it's the collective knowledge of business cells over the world. So people have participated in the creation of the Babok from Canada to Australia. And in between, you've got Europe, UK, and so on and so on. So a lot of people have participated to that. And it's also consensus-based. So there's always a global review. Um, if each IP that uh, IBA uh, releases, there's always a public review. On this, there was also a public review some time ago, but we'll get to that soon. So it's consensus-based. And you don't have to be IBA member to be a part of the public review. Well, not in the past. <clears throat> okay. Bubble Guide is a core product. Well, you got lots of things about it. It's a, a certification. You got three certificates, uh, certifications that you can uh, do on, on the Babok, um, the competency model, and some other stuff. So the Babok is an important uh, book uh, uh, for IBA and lots of things of uh, what IBA does. Um, there is the history. It began in 2004, but it was only in 2006 that you had the first release. So the version 1.0 was internal and 1.6 was public. Um, 2009, Babok version 2, on which I did my exam in 2012, and version 3 launched in 2015. That's all more than seven years ago. So um, well, this is a slide from the release back in the days. A version two was very IT oriented and there was an agile extension, but a small one. And the version three, it was beyond IT, business process management, uh, business architecture, business intelligence, and so on. Still the agile stuff, uh, because they, the industry was demanding more process uh, skills, um, strategic thinking, business architecture. In fact, the Babak version three was the first one of IBA that went beyond IT. In theory, uh, not the contents, but that was the idea. So in the Babok, we have this definition of business analysis. And uh, let's see if I can take away. Uh, uh, yeah. Two definitions, one from the idea of uh, uh, to enable change in an organization. And the other way is to enable an organization to express. Yeah. And it goes about change, uh, needs, solutions, value, stakeholders, and the sixth one, which is not on this definition, but in fact should belong there. Uh, but we'll get to that soon. Another thing which we saw in the previous slide, it was beyond IT. So it's not only because IT is very often on the operational uh, level. Yeah? 
uh, whereas uh, a business analysis can also be performed on a strategic and tactical level. Uh, Philip has some experience at the strategic level. I've got a little experience. So some of us do have experience to do business analysis at the strategic level, which before 2015, people didn't talk about it. It happened once in a while, but didn't talk about it. And as of Babok version three, they say like, we should also be there at a strategic level long before you talk about that here. And maybe performed within the boundaries of the project. So, or beyond or outside. I know quite a lot of people who do nothing but business process optimization. Yes. Oh, sorry. Um, so I know quite a lot of people doing process uh, optimization. And sometimes there is an IT project that runs out of it as a, as a spin-off. But their basic job is doing only process optimization. Our business analysis. Um, the structure, the structure of the Babo guide. Um, well, the core content is tasks and knowledge areas. And there are 50 tasks, 30, 30, 30 tasks, 30 tasks, and they are assembled or collected in something we call knowledge area. It's a, a theoretical collection of four, five, six uh, tasks in a, in a group with a logical thing around. We'll get to that later. Um, so logically related tasks and what's the logic? We'll get to that. Um, activities, task activities, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> and then another part, but it starts with this, but the core are the tasks and, and, and the knowledge area. But in fact, they start like, what is business analysis? Something I will share also this, uh, this evening. Um, some, some concepts, uh, some, some about something about techniques and perspectives. So let's start with those key concepts. Be because, before you want to go task and knowledge areas, what is business analysis? Well, I gave the definition, but there are some other concepts which are very important. And the first one is the BACCM. You see six core concepts, the business analysis core concept. You recognize the, the, the colors from the definition. The only one which wasn't there was the context. Okay. Each of those concepts is fundamental to business analysis. But, sorry, each core concept is defined by the either other five. You don't only see six little circles, you only see, also see 15 relationships between all those circles. And on top of that, which you don't see, every circle has even a relationship with itself because you can have different changes that are related or different solutions. So these circles are not shown here, but in a very old model of BACCM, I found it back, it's, it's in there. So you even have 21 relationships. So they're all, and the thing is, I'm going to ask a question. Sorry for those at home, I'm going to do it raising hands. Okay, how many, well, needs, solutions, stakeholders, I can assume that most of you are working with those. Huh? How many of those are really thinking about change when doing business analysis? Please raise your hands. Nicolas, ah, and two participants. Oh, we can even count here on top of that. <laughs> Uh, but lower the hands at the end, eh? so otherwise it will be in the middle of my screen. Okay, how many of you think about value? Think beyond customer value. So, for example, value for the back office employee. Oh, that's good. That's nice. That's nice. That's nice. How many of you think about context? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. This is something which is not very known. So... Imagine that you only think about need, solution, and stakeholders, and you don't think about the other things, then you don't all understand them fully. It doesn't mean that you have to understand all six in depth, but you need to understand a little bit about it to understand all of them. Um, all of them are equally important. Stakeholders don't like to hear that, but, but it's, it's like that. And they can also uh, done from strategic to uh, tactical. But let's go for an example. Okay, let's take the UK economy. Who are the stakeholders 
in an economy, consumers, merchants, manufacturers, the government. Yeah. And what do they need? Those kind of things. Yeah. So easy access, uh, easy access to goods, parts, raw materials, or goods, uh, uh, good price quality, uh, good income, or good revenue. It's 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 a bit the same. What does a government need? Well, a good economy. Again, there's the income. Um, good trade deals, control of those trade deals. And implicit, you also have to respect international agreements. The Irish border. Some people might have heard of it. Huh? Um, good. What was when they were inside the EU? This is the fourth dimension. So one, two, three. And this is the value, the perceived value. The smile is, is the uh, expression of the value on those needs within a given context. So, in fact, it was going pretty good. But they were complaining, the government, we don't have control over the trade deals. No, they had to share the control with 26 other countries. They were right. And legislation, we don't have control. No, they have to come up together, compromise on legislation, European legislation, so they didn't have full control. They were right. They were right. But that was firm sufficient to go to a Brexit. But during the transition period, in fact, there was a transition period, things were still okay, except for the control of the trade deals, because uh, the UK couldn't participate anymore in the trade deals. They have to follow the trade deals that were implemented by the EU, the remaining 26 other countries. And legislation was a bit fake. So we got this thinking, uh, smiley uh, em emoji. But then we had the Brexit. And look what happened. So it was really all sad faces, a lot of sad faces. And even on the on the Irish border, it was even worse. And I did this exercise in 2018 in London. And they didn't, there was there was no transition, there was no agreement at all at that moment. And they were talking about a soft Brexit and a hard Brexit. But this is what happened. Eh? The only difference that you see is that the smiley on trade deals and legislation is uh, oh sorry, is like this. And there, it was like that. So why, what, what happened? Like for, for the people and the merchants and well, you, we know it's not going well, very well. But they did have control over their trade deals. They did, but they didn't have leverage. They only are a market of 60 million people. Before there was a market of 500 million people. So if you are playing, for example, India with close to a billion people, a market of 15, oh, I want this, I want that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But if you're a market like EU, 500 million people, that's something different. So did, they did have control, but they didn't control the other part, whereas the EU had better control on the other side. Same a bit about legislation. So even, this is not IT, but this is business analysis. What's also in there in chapter two are the different requirements uh, categories classification. First of all, there's the business requirements. They explain you why. Why are we going to change stuff? As an example, this is a real world example. Um, a leading food retailer in Belgium wants to create new business uh, on a certain market segment, people that have food constraints like allergies, intolerances, or religious um, or conviction, uh, I, want, I don't want to eat meat because I don't want animals to suffer, for example. But those are all different types of food constraints. But so this uh, leading food retail in Belgium wants to uh, create new business in that kind of market segment. Okay, so why create new business? This is why we're going to do something. Then you have stakeholder requirements. Stakeholder requirements is a translation of those business requirements to the different stakeholders. The thing is, business requirements can't contradict. If they contradict, run away as fast as you can. Run away. If business requirements contradict, you are deep, deep, deep problem. 
stakeholders' requirements, they can contradict and they will often contradict. And then it's a task of the business analyst to find compromises, to find something that still complies to the business requirements, but where the stakeholders with the conflicting requirements can compromise in. That's a huge task for a business analyst. And uh, the key word is, what do the stakeholders really need? Uh, same example, consumer with food allergies want to find effortlessly recipes that match these allergies so that you can focus on making uh, meals, preparing meals without thinking on the restrictions. Because if you have a food allergy, it's frustrating. Is there peanut in there? Or is there this in there? Or that? It's, it's frustrating. So imagine you've got recipes that take into account those allergies or whatever, and without a hassle, you can start cooking. Imagine. That's a stakeholder need. You don't see any solution. It's, I need this because of that. And then you have solution requirements. And most of you are very comfortable with solution requirements, but we call them requirements, but most of them are solution requirements. And you know, functional and non-functional requirements. It's, it's um, capabilities and qualities of a product. If we go, which is the keyword, how? <laughs> how? That is the keyword. How are we going to assure that what the stakeholder needs is implemented? How? That is the keyword. And with the same example, a website where you can create a login, where you can define a food profile, okay? and even wait, for example, peanut, no, no, I'm going to the hospital or maybe die. But uh, okay, dairy products, sometimes I can eat them. Oh. Um, and then you have a website uh, where you find recipes that match those criteria eh? and, uh, and say like, no, no things with peanuts, but once in a while, uh, but lower in ranking something with a dairy product. Map the recipes with the products because we wanted to have new business. Don't forget that. Eh? We still didn't want to have, we want to make new business. And then make a shopping list, a shopping list that you can send to, to your mobile phone where, or send it to the internet and it's delivered. Or you go with your mobile phone in the store. Okay, here's the milk, here's the sugar. And it was really going to happen that way. I don't know how far it was, but uh, I left the company so a few years ago, uh, but that was the idea. So the shopping list could be used in different ways. And the website should be secure and responsive so that no one is aware about my allergies and responsive so you can do it on your tablet, on your mobile phone, on your, on, on, on your laptop. Yeah. So that is how. And then you have transition requirements. Transition requirements are the only ones that are temporary in kind, in nature. So uh, once the transition is finished, there are no, no longer used, which is maybe a bit extreme. Um, but many of you name, know, for example, you do a migration from one database to another data migration, which is a technical transition requirement. So maybe not for a business house, but it's also a transition requirement. But it can also be training. And the thing is, training is very interesting. Training can be a transition requirement or a solution requirement. Depends. For example, if you go from Salesforce to Microsoft Dynamics, and you say, well, before when we did scenario A or case A, uh, in uh, Salesforce, now we do it that way in Dynamics. Those are transition requirements. But imagine that newcomers, people that arrive in the company, they don't need to know how it happened in Salesforce. It's scenario A, we do it that way. That's a solution requirement. So the context always rules them. And well, the, the keyword there is change, of course. And as an example, a marketing campaign, for example. Interrupt me if you have something urgent. Also on the other side uh, of the internet, interrupt me. Is there something urgent to uh, as a question? We have a classification scheme. You don't have many business requirements, not according to the definition of the BABOK. You don't have that many because there are not that many reasons why you are going to change. There are three, four, five maximum. But there are many more stakeholder requirements. I know a company where you couldn't start a project if you didn't have a gut feeling 80% of the stakeholder requirements. 
And then you have the solution requirements. And you have the transition requirements. You could link the transition requirements with stakeholder requirements, solution requirements, technical requirements, uh, depending on the nature of the transition. Uh, but it's already very crowded on the screen, so I didn't make all those relationships. So here you have the uh, requirement, the, the design cycle. So you always have to start to ask, why do we want to change things? If you arrive in an organization and they don't know why they are going to change things, I would run away. I told you already, I would run away or really, really express like we need to know why we want to do that. It's the sponsor. It's at director's level, at C level. Uh, those people, the product owner, sometimes they have to tell you why something is going to change. Then there's the what, eh? stakeholder requirements. After that, how are we going to satisfy the needs of the stakeholders? And then how are we going to, from the old situation to the new situation, uh, transition requirements. But business requirements, very often written by C-level, uh, sponsor, uh, high level, rarely by business analysts. Sorry, sorry, right. But the stakeholder requirements, that is the area which is very specific for business analysis because solution requirements that's a domain that we share with functional analysts or system analysts they also do solution requirements but the the, the the area where we are pretty unique is at the stakeholder requirements and yet no not a lot of business know them or use them and then transition requirements that is shared if it's a transition on stakeholder requirements, it's for the business analysis. If it's a transition on functional requirements or functional stuff, it's for functionalists, but also business analysts doing functional analysis. There's, no, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's a domain that is shared with other titles and other roles. Now we get to the core, remember? Huh? First you have key concepts and so on, and then there's a core, and that's the tasks and the knowledge areas, but also techniques, the clicker. Well, a task, piece of work. Huh? Um, can be formally, eh, but it's part of business analysis. Um, definition, universally applicable. You get those slides. I, I don't want to read all the slides. I want to tell the story that's behind it. Um, which is also interesting for IBA. You might perform other activities that are not mentioned in the BABOK. It's possible but they don't see them as business analyst activities. For example, if you prepare test scenarios, they consider it as business analysis, but if you perform them, exec execute them, that's not business analysis. Interesting, if you ever wanna do a application for one of the exams, you have to take that into account. It's only those tasks that are described in the, in the BABOK. We're not talking about techniques. Huh? We get to that. Also, Babok doesn't give a sequence. It's not first this and that. What it does do, every task has some inputs and outputs, and some outputs are used anywhere, somewhere else in, in another task as input. So there is some logical relationship between those tasks, but there's not a, it's not a methodology. Very important to know, but there are methodologies that are compliant to the Babok. So, Techniques, well, we're more comfortable with techniques. What's the difference between task and technique? A task is some activity or a series of activities that you need to have to get from input to output. That's like in the process. Techniques is how you perform that task. You can have one task and use one technique or maybe a few techniques to, to accomplish and to get the output of that task. And, um, and currently, and there are 50. I used 30 tasks and 50 techniques in the Babo version three, but we are seven years later. We have many more techniques. So, um, and you still can attach them to a certain task or more than one task, um, multiple techniques. And sometimes it says like, this technique you shouldn't use for the task, but we have seen examples in the, in the, in the previous Babo study group where they did use the, a, a technique that was not normally not appropriate for that task, but successfully used for a task for which Babok considers it's not appropriate. Business analysts can, of course, create their own techniques. 
it doesn't have to be limited to those in the bubble or those who have been have came afterwards. Uh, you can also start your own technique as long as you do get input and output according to a task or a task which is not in the bubble, but then it's not for IBA, a business analysis activity. Then we get to the knowledge areas. I spoke with the, the, the director of IP a few weeks ago from IBA, and he says, in fact, it's about those 30 tasks. Those are the most important. The knowledge areas are ways to, uh, how you say, to collect them in groups with some logic behind them. But I'll try to explain a bit the logic. And you also have some slides with the details, but let's go on this, on this slide. So in this slide, you see uh, the inner three uh, knowledge areas, the inner circle and the outside circle. It's the inner circle where we call, it's not in the Babok, it's a group of people call them the core knowledge areas because there it happens, their business analysis happens. Okay, what do you mean? Well, the outside are supporting the inside knowledge areas. For example, you can't do strategy and analysis without elicitation, but you can't exchange information with collaboration. Okay. Planning and monitoring, well, you, you're doing things in those inner three and you have to plan them or monitor them. Did I do it correctly or didn't I forget anything? Okay. And then the requirements life cycle. So in the requirements analysis and design definition, you're going to collect uh, requirements, collect or well, create requirements, elicit information to get to those requirements. And there's a life cycle management to uh, draft, uh, validate it, and so on and so on. Uh, you also have some uh, maybe dependencies between requirements. It's also happened there. But in the inner circle, there the real business analysis happen, and the outer, outer circle, it's supporting. Also important, but it's supporting the inner circle. Okay. Elicitation, and I'm going to show the sequence that we're going to use for the Babok study group, which is not the same order as in the Babok for specific reasons. Elicitation and collaboration. Elicitation to gather and to, to extract information from people, from documents and so on, is to get information. Eh? Where in a later stage, you're going to do stuff with eh? strategy analysis, requirements and so on. Eh? Um, and then you also have the collaboration. It's easy. It's not, it's not exotic. It's not rocket science. Huh? Strategy analysis. Uh, there you go at the uh, strategic and tactical uh, level. You're going to understand the needs of the organization or a part of the organization, HR or finance, huh? the needs, strategic or tactical. So you can get them in business requirements or well, stakeholder plans, maybe. Uh, uh, um, and it, it gives the organization the way to express those needs. Um, most of the people are very comfortable with it. This is where requirements are written. You do analysis, and at the end, you get requirements. You, uh, you get feedback with collaboration, like, are those okay? Uh, and then there's a validation, or you have to update your stuff and so on and so on, or maybe do again some elicitation because you, you found there's something missing. Yeah? Um, that's how it happens. Um, there is where analysis happens and the requirements are created, are crafted. I like the word craft. Yeah, incremental, iterative, very interesting. During the Babok study group, we'll go into, into depth, and it's most of the time it's Robin, uh, and which you, who will you hear after my presentation, uh, who does that uh, introduction of, uh, of the uh, different uh, knowledge areas more in depth. So this is a glimpse. Um, then you have solution evaluation, uh, testing, but not only testing. Imagine there's no project, and you want to assess the current situation. That's also solution evaluation. Don't forget, it's not only testing and testing, well, it's not business house, it's preparing the testing and make sure that testing happens and so on and so on. Yeah. Then we have the requirement lifecycle management. As I said, 
you have a whole life cycle of the requirements like drafts, validated, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you got dependencies between requirements. It's very interesting to identify them so that if one uh, requirement changes, that might impact others and so on. Um, and then you have uh, planning and monitoring, which is the last one that we will see. Nothing exotic to say, to tell about uh, planning and monitoring. And there we said like business analysis can happen outside the project, pre-project phase, project, post-project. Well, in a pre-project, you're going to tell why. Remember the rationale, why are we going to do a project? The project is about delivery, and then you are going to get the benefits, hopefully. Hopefully. Strategy analysis, you see it's those three, yeah? the three core knowledge areas. This is from the Babok, this drawing. Yeah? I did the animation myself, but this drawing is from the Babok. Yeah? So the three core uh, knowledge areas. Strategy analysis is going into the why. Right? You are going to make a business case and that kind of stuff. Why are we going to do this? And why are we going to, into that direction? Requirements analysis and design definition, and then solution evaluation. But after you have a project, you can still assess, like we went live, things are going good, but did we get the value that we perceived in the beginning? So you have to measure. So even if you go operational and there are no bugs or, or not, not that many bugs or so, you still have to say like, we wanted to obtain this or that. Did we get there? Also very important. Underlying competencies. Underlying competencies. This is one of my favorite. You got those six domains. Okay? Analytical thinking and problem solving. You can't imagine being a business analyst if you don't have those. Okay? I can't. Behavior characteristics. I will go in, in, in uh, very briefly into the different ones. Behavior. Are, am I ethical? Am I trustworthy? It's more personal skills, personal, yeah. Who are you? Also very important. Uh, if people don't trust me, how am I going to get information out of them to create change? Because people are resistant to change. Behavior characteristics. Communication skills, very important. Interaction skills, very important. You have to collaborate with people developers, business people, and so on. And then the last two that I mentioned is business knowledge and tools and technology. I work now for 30, 30 years in IT, first programming, functional analysis, business analysis. And I have to tell you, the easiest one to learn of those six are those last two, business knowledge and tools and technology. Those are the easiest because Tools and technology, for example, BPMN is a technique. Imagine you're not analytical. How the hell are you going to be able to do BPMN? It will be very difficult. You will never be a good one unless you're a bit analytical. So there are a lot of things that you need to know. And I've worked in 20 different business domains. And I can tell you there has not been any of those 20 that I thought, thought was complicated. Although you arrive in a company, oh, no, it's so complicated. So complex. In the beginning, I, was, I went with them. But if you take a step backwards, there are not that many, well, rocket science maybe, uh, or physics or whatever. But the, the, the most of the, the business domains that we work in, there's not any that is very complex. It's the how they do it that might be complex. But the core business is not that complex. OK. I'm going very briefly, analytical thinking, uh, problem solving, system thinking, conceptual, visual thinking, communication skills, verbal, nonverbal, listening, uh, um, interaction skill, facilitation, workshops, uh, uh, leadership, influencing, teamwork. Many of those skills and, and competencies are still very valid, although the book is already seven years old, still very, very valid. But I think 
the, uh, the emphasis should be more on, on those things you can't learn fast. It's like uh, communication, interaction, uh, uh, being analytical, uh, and so on, and, and problem solving. Uh, behavioral ethics, accountability, trustworthiness, adaptability. Darwin said the future is not for the animals that uh, evolve the fastest. No, that adapt the best. It's for those that adapt the best. And that is what we business should be, adapt. In, so I've worked in 20 different business domains. I had to adapt. Maybe I got in adapting, adaptability. Um, business knowledge, business problem, but I think you can learn them very fast. But maybe I'm an exception there. Tools and technology. Um, I, I also include uh, business analysis tools, technology, but also techniques. I think it's also part of the tools. That we have a toolkit. Eh? Te techniques are our toolkit. And our, those are also rather easy to learn, but you do, do need to be analytical or you have to have those other uh, domains of uh, underlying competencies. Perspectives. I'm going to be very brief. I'm going to share the slides. Perspectives. It was an attempt of uh, IBA with the BABOC to, um, to give a view, a perspective. For example, a business architect, the emphasis on those 30 tasks is more on task geeks uh, 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 or on those techniques. If you are an HR, uh, in business intelligence analyst, there's more emphasis on those techniques and those tasks. And that kind. So it was an attempt. And in fact, the Pacific, it's, it's only a few pages per business architecture, uh, business process management. And they're interesting to read, but they haven't been successful. And I don't know if they will be there in Babok version four. But I think it was a very good attempt, but they only did something with the agile extension. Um, and for example, business architecture and business process management, they haven't exploited or explored it further. Good. And I am at the end of my presentation. Robin? <laughs> Any questions? Also from the online audience, if there are any questions, any examples you would like on specific topics? Um, yes, maybe I may have a question. Uh, I'm interested in how uh, ETIL principle could be um, interesting in those kind of practices that you are describing. Uh, is ETIL something fundamental for the service provided by a business analyst? Huh. I, I, I think, to be honest, um, it's, a, it's a toolkit. ETIL for me, it's more a kind of toolkit. It's a framework uh, in which those processes uh, and, and, and the services framework uh, could work. It's not the only one, but it's one of the most used ones. So it's, 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 it's commonly known um, as a business analyst, you could be good in Italy, but not everyone who is good in Italy will be a good business analyst. I've worked with a company and they said like, uh, uh, I went uh, from IT uh, business was moved from IT to business uh, to the business. I said, well, if you want to be a business analyst with us, well, you need to have a green belt uh, on, on Lean Six Sigma. So they believe that if you are if you are a green belt or a black belt, which is higher on Lean Six Sigma, you're a good business analyst. It's it's only one part of those uh, techniques. Yeah, is that an answer to your question? Yes, thank you very much. I mean, okay, it's okay. okay. Thank you. I'm going to give the word to uh, Robin. Just again. Two big parts in the Babok. First, key concepts, and then the core concepts, and uh, and the underlying key uh, components is, is, is in fact with the first part. You'll get the slides afterwards. Maybe first a question from my side for the audience. Does this give you a different or a broader perspective on business analysis? Does it give you an extra structure to work with? Do they say, actually, I do a lot of these things already, maybe not in this specific structure but anyway i do them yeah 
That is true. It is uh, yeah. broad, and you will not apply the same tools, techniques in every context. Every context is different. Yeah, I remember uh, last week we also had that kind of uh, workshop, and uh, I remember from a colleague of yours, uh, he said, "Well, business analysis well, there's a lot of you know hundreds of different traditions, things that you can ask questions." I am wondering how to combine BA book with a method. With a method? Yes. Or methodology? She says method. With a method? <coughs> basically, the BA book is. Sorry, sorry, ik bedoel the methodology. Ah, okay. okay. Methodology. Because okay. I'm asking because I used to work with CSC and we had a methodology called Catalyst. And the description was a methodology for implementing business change. And I can see how it would, well, it resembles Mavok, but it, it's more practical. You have steps and steps and things to do and tasks and activities. And I'm oh. trying to figure out how, how I would combine the two. Well, uh, the, the, the Mavok gives you a number of tasks with inputs and outputs, where methodology, methodology gives you a sequence. Methodologies, you can look at as a, a process. A process, if you do this, then you do that, and then you do that, and sometimes you have a, a loop back and iteration, where the Babok supports all of those. Right? Uh, but the methodology can be Babok compliant if all the tasks and activities can be found back somewhere in, in the Babok. But the, as, as one of the slides has said, the Babok doesn't give you, it's not a methodology, it doesn't give you a sequence. It only gives you input and output, which the output can be used somewhere else. And that is a slide we we're going to see in the next presentation. <laughs> Impressive slide, by the way. Okay, thanks. Is it because when you think in these sequences, it becomes too limited? Hmm. Because, oh, I have to do this, then this, and this. It depends on the context. And... Uh, of course, there's no, there's no goal. Not each, not each methodology is usable in each uh, context. Context always rules. Uh, but it doesn't need, need to be se sequentially. It can be uh, parallel. Well, so that's why, that's why I think for yeah, so I assume bubble tends to hear off that. Yeah, but a methodology doesn't need to be sequentially. Also, eh? it's like uh, sometimes you have a decision. Okay, sometimes you have to do. So uh, um, we have the volere, eh? the ma mastering the requirements process from the Robertson. They have a process diagram with with some with some decision nodes, and then then goes uh, here and there. So. Um, it doesn't need to be sequentially, yeah. yeah. But it's 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 well written. This is the, this is the order of doing things, and sometimes you have to make a decision to go this way or that way or that way, and sometimes you have to uh, loop back. But you can only loop back until that place and so on. So <laughs> that's the methodology. Yes, I'm gonna approach you. Sorry, uh, So quite often uh, we're consultants, so basically we're entered as business analyst, the role of business analyst in a project or an initiative even before there's a project at different moments, at different stages. So how many times have someone told you just two lines, just a problem statement, go ahead. So there you don't have a, a, a methodology you can apply. There you need a framework, there you need tools, then you need to be able to see the bigger picture. What should my first step be? Which are the first questions I need to be able to answer? What are the first answers I need to be able to provide to the client or, or the business basically? And that's why the Babok basically is actually something, a very convenient toolkit. It doesn't only give you the tools to do the analysis, but also the framework, and especially a framework that allows you to take perspective into each and every situation you have. Yeah, perspective, uh, BACCM, for example, that's the first thing. Everything is interconnected to one another. Well, more on that in the study group, of course. And we're not going to divulge everything here tonight. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So no one has flat the building here at DXE, so that's fantastic. So congratulations, Stefan, that's, uh, that's a good one. Okay, so now you've already learned a lot of information about actually what you do at IBA, what business analysis stands for according to us. But of course, the Babok, for the moment, it's not something tangible for you. So I brought something with me, something very special, a 3D interactive model of the Babok. For the elder people among us, it's called a book. Some people may call it a PDF. So this is the Babok front side. I hope the audience at home can see it like that. So it's not the smallest book in the world. Yeah? Let's be honest. 
but we're in luck. Basically, if you look at the structure that goes about the six different knowledge areas, if I mentioned earlier, there we are. That's it. Those are the knowledge areas, plus the intro, blah, 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 and so on, of course, and the table of content. This is all techniques and references. So first of all, when you see this, don't be afraid, don't run away. It's not that bad, it really isn't. Our study group, it's the fifth year we're going to do the study group, if I'm not mistaken. So as part of our mission as IBI Brussels chapter, we are here for the professionalization of the business analysis profession in, in Belgium. Why? Well, because it's needed. We feel that business analysis is still being way undervalued by higher management layers. As business analysts, we are able to help businesses achieve higher potential, higher value. That's what we're there for. And that's why with the chapter, we wanna foster awareness on the added value we as analysts can deliver. We mentioned our Babak study group. Uh, so that was actually the second part of the presentation for today. Now, how are we going to digest this massive thing, basically? Um, it's a bit of an atypical approach we take. We were actually the first organization to do it. So if you go online, Babok study, Babok course, just Google it. You will land on some certification preparation page. A training course that will prepare you to pass the exam. That's not what we're about. It, it will definitely help you. Eh? Let's, not, let's not, not make a mistake about it. It will help you. But we want to help understand the Babok, the structure of the Babok. Help people understand who are in a situation that I've just said. Just two lines as a problem statement, go ahead. We want to help people give the reflections and the structures from the Babak that's needed to advance. And how do we do that? Basically, the study group, well, we facilitate. I, I for example, I present the different knowledge areas, with a bit of storytelling, of course. And then together, interactively, we discuss the different chapters in the Babak. So it's really, as we call, say in Dutch, a whistle lagging. Right? And we're also going to exchange real life experiences. So this is why we hope among the people who are going to register for the Babak study group, there are people with limited to no experience or people with quite a lot of experience. Because this cross fertilization that can be something quite valuable, actually. And we're going to work in teams, finally. Oh, you are going to work in teams. This will really bring the Babak to life and will make it more understandable. So here you see a picture from the presentations of last year, uh, the, the group works. So as I said, it's not a certification preparation course, not preparation course. It will help, definitely. But most of all about understanding what business analysis is all about. We will also try to embed within your minds the right mindset for performing business analysis. For example, what is the very first question we as analysts should always ask ourselves and others? Anyone? Voila, why? And what's the second, third, fourth, and fifth question we should ask? Voila. After that, we change a bit. Indeed. Always question everything. So that's a certain mindset. And we're going to focus, obviously, on the six knowledge areas, as Stefan already presented to you tonight. We're going to, of course, we're going to go in depth, depth in the different knowledge areas. But most of all, we're going to talk about the relations between the different knowledge areas. And within the knowledge areas, you have different tasks and activities. And those are also interrelated. And that's where the secret lies, basically. Now, in order to do this, to digest this massive book, we're actually going to organize eight sessions in total. First session will be held the end of January, January 31st. It's a kickoff session. We're going to do it in person as we, do, we are here tonight. Location still to be determined. And in this kickoff session, we will start presenting to you the first knowledge area, which is going to be elicitation and collaboration. Everyone has already done that. Secondly, we're also going to put together the different teams. We're going to be collaborating with one another. More on that later. Then basically, a couple of weeks later, next knowledge area, and so on, and so on, until the end of June. Then again, we're going to have a live session where all the different groups are going to present basically the bigger picture of what they have learned. So in each and every one of the initial sessions, there we're going to go in depth, in depth, really into the details. Not too much, but really into details. But at the end, what we hope to see each and every year is that the participants are able to put together the dots between the different tasks and different knowledge areas. 
And actually each and every year we are amazed with what people come up with, with what people have learned. And for us, that's very motivating to continue to do this. So this agenda, you can also find it on our website, on the registration page. Are there people who already registered for the, the Bobbox study group? Raise your hand. Good call. Those who haven't done it yet, it's not too late. There are still a few places available, also online. Now, just to give you a bit of a, a more tangible idea of what we're going to do. In the first session, as I said, the kickoff, we're going to set up your team. And we're going to start with thinking about an imaginary case. Well, why an imaginary case? Well, quite simple, because often when we work at clients, quite confidential, obviously. So we need to pay a bit of attention. And this is actually the case you will be using throughout the entire study group. Yeah? And you will also demonstrate your knowledge of the different knowledge areas on that. Uh, and also, we choose picture on case because, okay, we don't want to favor anyone in the team in the case that person is working on in real life, as we said. And also, we want to, to invite you to put yourself into the shoes of someone else, of other different stakeholders. Right? And that's the most important thing. We need to be able to place ourselves within the mind, the mindset of different stakeholders in order to collaborate. So here, for example, last year we had a team, the Imagineers, with something imaginary on our own digital work. Worked quite well. So practically, first of all, you're going to decide on a T name, team name, something quite okay. Exchange email addresses, phone numbers, and try and set up your first team meeting. Yeah? So, and be aware, you've seen the time frame between the different sessions. It's not too long. So don't wait too long between the sessions to get in touch with one another. Uh, and for collaboration, of course, you can use uh, the, the classic things, uh, a WhatsApp, for example, team groups, if you're all from the same company. We always offer a Slack platform, everyone knows Slack, on which you can collaborate, on which you can put announcements and so on. So quite convenient. So the real assignment in itself, well, there are six different sessions per knowledge area in which we're going to give the theoretical part, in which we're going to discuss real life experiences. After the presentation, it's up to you guys to prepare your case, your group work. You will present your group work to us, and at the end, you will provide us with a summary. Sounds simple, huh? but let's not forget, per knowledge area and per task huh, for your case, you will describe the inputs. What are the inputs that are taken per task? What are the outputs that are produced? What techniques have you used? And okay, we have about 50 techniques in the Babok. There are many, many more techniques that, that are used today. So if you have an inventive technique for something, do share it with everyone. What stakeholders are involved, for example? Those are the things you will go on about. You don't have to, in the presentation, you don't have to be exhaustive. So you don't have to work out a real true life case and all the details, just tiny aspects of it. So we are able to see, you understand what we're trying to achieve with the task, with the knowledge area. You don't need to demonstrate your mastery of a business analysis technique. That's not the aim. You will learn it throughout the case, throughout the study group, but that's not the principal aim. Be aware, we will challenge you. So uh, we try to be as pleasantly as possible, but Stefan and I, we are able to ask quite nasty questions. Aren't we, Stefan? Yeah, go hide yourself in the kitchen. Very nasty questions sometimes. Yeah. Eh? But but it's getting better than... No, I, we can discuss about the nastiness, but uh, no. So the aim is really that we challenge you to think about what you propose. And then even a bit further, huh? even a bit further, uh, we want to expand towards the global view of the knowledge areas. How is everything interrelated to one another? The relationship between the tasks, also across knowledge areas, which is quite big, you will see. Again, you don't need to prepare it in all the details because presentation time is limited. Right? So there's about 15 minutes presentation time and 15 to 20 minutes Q&A. So that's where you see where the interactivity comes into play. This is the most annoying part on which we will challenge you throughout the study group. Caution. That's a view of the relationships between all the tasks that are in the Babok and how they are interrelated to one another. And this is something that one of the, the study groups, uh, I think Dries van Stappen, I think it was from uh, Ordina, I think, produced at the end of the study group. And it actually gave quite a good insight on all the relationships, the ins and outs between the tasks and activities. Yeah, now it looks like gibberish, yeah, I know. But if you're able to see the logic be between those things, it will definitely help you in real life. Wow. 
So given time is limited and okay, it spreads over six months, the, the Babuk study group, but still time between the sessions is limited. So plan wisely, try and be efficiently. Don't be too exhaustive. Don't go detailing a racking matrix uh, with about 50 tasks or activities and 20 stakeholders. We don't want to see that. Personally, I see that more than enough in my day-to-day -day job. So short and concise, basically. We, again, we don't want to see your knowledge about techniques. No. It's all about the Babak, the relationships between the different things. Voilà. So join us for success, I'd say. This thing I want to end with. Um, I know this is quite short, quite brief indeed, and because it's already quite late today, it's already eight o'clock, I think. So do you have any questions actually? After seeing those two presentations, are there people who are saying, oh yeah, I might join the public study group, I haven't subscribed yet. Or are there people who are saying, oh God, no, I'm not going to join. Yeah, block the doors. <laughs> but the optimum group size, uh, we try and make it around six persons per group. Uh, more or less, okay, so six or seven, doesn't really matter. More than it will be a bit counterproductive, I'm afraid. We also limit the number of groups. So maximum three groups, but very limited. Quite some, one second. Why? Because the first series we did of the Babak study group, we had 10 groups, I think. We had a bit, we had a bit too much success. We had, to, we had to foresee auditoriums for that session and that was pre-COVID. Huh? So uh, that was even more difficult. Uh, that wasn't the most productive thing. So we were very surprised by that. And now by experience, we've noticed three groups, six, seven people max works out perfectly because that way per group, per group yeah, 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 six, six, seven persons per group. Yeah, that's the, the right size. That's a sweet spot because that way within a group, you can have interactivity, people of different experience level, different backgrounds even. And then the groups can also interact with one another. If you do that with more than three groups, it just becomes impossible. Oh, voila. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. um, so there are 12, no, there's six sessions and two hours that take 12 hours, and then there's like two to three weeks between each session. What's the <laughs> optimum or like the old optimum of time spent in those three hours where we have offline work? Cool. That depends a bit. So the first session, uh, there we're going to, okay, create a team, distribute the teams, uh, talk a bit and so on. And then we'll have about uh, three quarters of an hour presentation by me, also quite interactive, and that's the theoretical part. So that's session one, live. And then the following sessions will be online. So the time spent by each and every group, each and every, every individual, that's a bit different. There are some people who are more interested than others. Of course, there are some groups as a whole that are more engaged than others. That's, that's group dynamics. In terms of time spent, well, you can be efficient. If you say within one hour after one Babak study group session, I can, can prepare the case, no. That just won't be doable. Quite honestly, I think realistically, after uh, we've given you the theoretical presentation, it's like, go, it's, it's like when being in college. Yeah? After you listen an hour to a professor talking, do you remember everything he said? No, absolutely not. No one does. So we recommend take the Babo guide, you, you will receive a copy of the Babo guide uh, if you participate, obviously. The live interactive 3D model, very special. So, and you can read what's in the Babo, yeah, of course. And then as a group, you, you can discuss, okay, so now this is our, our project. This is our virtual case. This is the knowledge areas. These are the tasks. I say, how should we go about it? How should we go about it? What should be the next episode? Okay, you take that approach. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. We might be able to use that technique, okay? And then you just use that technique, just give a small example of how we would use a technique, why a technique is appropriate according to you in this particular situation, of course. And while doing that, you will see in the structure of each knowledge area, uh, they talk about inputs, outputs, techniques you can use, but also considerations, things you need to bear in mind while performing a certain task. So honestly, most realistic, I'd say between five and six hours individually spent, then I think you are relatively well prepared for the next meetup where you will present yourself the case. Huh? Also depends how fancy you want to make your PowerPoint. Yeah? So it's not a course about making PowerPoints. So let's say five to six hours realistic, okay? Yes. Yes, each and every year 
we record the presentations uh, that are given. Uh, are we going to give them to you, Stefan, tell you share it in, in core? Are we going to give the presentations of the past years to the participants? Uh, you can say it here in my mic, eh? No, no, you go ahead. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll listen. No. That would be too easy. <laughs> no. And no, why? You can, you can maybe um, explain about a few cases that has been, have been used. Yes, uh, yes. By the yes, listeners. that of course we will do. That of course we will do. Just to give you an idea about the, let's say, the size of what you need to prepare. Let's call it like that. But we really are going to challenge you to think yourself about it. If we give you a solution, then you won't have <clears throat> learned that much, honestly. No. So, and and the interesting is we have never done that. So uh, mm -hmm. this is the fifth year we're doing we're, we're doing this Babok study. We never shared examples of the previous year mm -hmm. because then and each year teams have surprised them with the way they shown the results. So each time it was a different way of presenting stuff. So Paul, use your creativity. We're going to explain again, this is a task, inputs, outputs, this is what you need to present mm -hmm. uh, and the level of detail and so on and so on. That is something we're going to first in the first session and we will repeat it uh, uh, when we are ongoing next six sessions. Um, but we're not going to show the output of those teams. We can tell an example what they did and, and uh, the Disney uh, Disneyland and mm -hmm. so on and so on. But uh, we're not going to show them their output. We are we are always reachable. Eh? So what we what we do each and every year, eh, because I mentioned uh, Slack, for example, you also have our email address. As so if you subscribe, you're, so as a group, don't hesitate to reach out to us and say, okay, we're here presented with this case. We're discussing about something. We don't understand something. That's what we're there for. Eh? So actually, uh, there is Christophe. There's the band, There's me. So we are the organizer of the study group, and we're there to accompany. Also, one of the reasons why we don't allow real life cases, because otherwise we would invoice you. Well, it depends. Uh, first of all, we want to make it inclusive. Everyone is allowed to participate. Target audience, obviously, is Belgium uh, for obvious uh, reasons, but everyone is welcome to join. Uh, so, uh, when we organize the first session, we will just ask, okay, everyone okay in Dutch? No. Everyone okay in French? No. Everyone okay in English? We hope everyone's okay with that. Huh? So, last year we had the first time. Uh, uh, only Dutch. Yeah, it was the first in all those years that was only Dutch. Uh, but also something important. So we have a hybrid session today. Mm -hmm. uh, people that will uh, participate because we have two sessions in person need to be here on those two sessions. It's yeah. it's impossible. And also to collaborate and so on. So the the six sessions on the six knowledge areas and the seventh session with the now the seventh session will be live. No, but eight normal. Yeah, <clears throat> well eight. So um, it's important that you are able to to uh, get to Mechelen or Leuven, maybe Brussels, Brussels mm -hmm. but those places. Uh, the first years we did it live eh, in person, and we saw that it was very tiring to do organize eight sessions uh, in, in a six mm -hmm. month time. It was too tiring. And with COVID, we were forced to do it. We, the first session was live, mm -hmm. and the rest of the season, it was uh, at home eh, virtually. Much, huh? And we saw that worked, and that worked also pretty good in the teams to collaborate. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but now that we can go back, come back together, we said the first time to put up teams uh, live to get to meet each other, to get to know each other. That afterwards, if you have the call with your team, then you know, oh, this is that person, or this is that person. Mm -hmm. And the last session, it's also to get a drink afterwards uh, to celebrate that you did your accomplishment. Yeah. Yeah. Now that we're still presenting. Now we're this still way. presenting. After the questions. Mm -hmm. So it's important. And, and you do spend quite a lot of time. As yeah. you calculated, uh, eight sessions at two and a half, let's say three hours, 24 hours in six months' time. Um, and then additional. The sessions themselves? The, the, uh, no, the, 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 preparation, sessions, times, the, the huh? preparation time. You mm -hmm. have to double it at least. And maybe even triple it. Somewhere yeah. in double and triple, I think you get some idea. So. It's an investment, but we are teaching, as uh, Robin said, we're not teaching, preparing you for an exam. That's not the purpose. We are going to try to get you understand the babok mm -hmm. on applying it to uh, your case. And maybe you remember from your school, university or, or, or secondary school, uh, uh, 
that it's much easier to study something you understand mm -hmm. than study something from, from by heart. You can do your exam with the with the Babok by heart, but you only accomplish to do the ECBA. Because yeah. if you want to do the CCBA certificate or the uh, CBAP certificate, only learning by heart, you will not yep. pass your exam. You will not pass your exam. You have to understand, you have to know, and you have to combine those two. Mm -hmm. So you have to need experience and, 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 and so on. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that you first understand before you start learning for an, or preparing for an exam. If you want to do an exam, you still have to study it. And as Stefan said, uh, yeah, it is an investment of your time even maybe your personal time yeah? but that's with everything if you want uh, in our in our professional world okay certification it's a thing and uh, that's a reality it's always an investment of time but the aim is obviously that investment will yield some something at least a better understanding of business analysis better skill level a better way of being able to interact with your peers with your management with your clients now that you will get a deeper understanding of business analysis and let's not forget, if you're certified, ECBA, CCBA, or CBOP, and you're discussing with five people around the table, and you're the one to say, hey, I'm CBOP certified. I know what I talk about, the business analysis. No, no, it's much easier to win a discussion, eh? Yes, Th that's I'm, I'm CBOP. Yes, I'm not yet. But that's why you can, you can still keep winning my, our discussions. But it is something that helps. Well, it's waving around. That's not the point. Waving around, that's not the point. It gives you okay it gives you a bit of credibility yeah, obviously but you'll be able to discuss a lot better about the content about the merit when you really study about and when you really understand it and and that's our that's our ultimate uh, objective also if you want to go for the ecba exam which mm -hmm. is the entry uh, certificate of business analysis um you can take uh, the time of the sessions sessions alone session times uh, for uh, for professional development, you need to have 20 hours of professional development. So the sessions, but only if there's one CBAP present in the organizers. Yep. So that's the reason I had my CBAP in 2012. As the first one in Belgium. Yeah, and like he's the oldest CBAP in Belgium. There are now people that have done their CBAP before 2012, but they migrated, they immigrated to Belgium. Mm -hmm. Uh, actually, I think it was last week or something. I did an info session for for DX for DXC, uh, just on how to certify what are the different certifications that are possible. And um, the list of people certified in Belgium it isn't that gigantic. Eh? We're not talking about hundreds. We're talking about twenty to thirty eh? across different levels. So, want to talk about value on a market? Something to consider. Are there also people online that would like to join? Uh, the Babok study group says, like, hmm, this sounds interesting. Omnistian is considering. Ah, ah, I think it will be a good thing for you. You're already doing a lot of stuff in business analyst community and uh, get your hands on the Babok. I think it will be a good a good move. Mm -hmm. But you have to be able to invest your time. It's, it's, yeah. it's an investment. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, last call for questions. If not, we're going to close this session. Um, before closing up, we would like to thank again DXC for hosting this session and for their uh, uh, the, the nice catering. And we'll have some uh, social networking afterwards. You can still ask our questions. Mm -hmm. People from home won't be able to do that. So that's a plus to be here in person. And uh, give a big applause for the people of DXC, please. And if no questions anymore, I call this a wrap. Sofian Rafari also said yes. Of course, it's interesting. Okay, perfect. Uh, well, I hope to see you, Sophia, and uh, something else. <clears throat> okay, bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone Thanks. at home. And uh, good evening. Good evening. Bye bye.